Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I'm planting a really pretty hibiscus out in my garden and I've been waiting a really long time to show you guys this plant because I wanted to wait until it was blooming. Um, so yesterday I noticed one of its buds was about ready to open. So I think today it's perfect time to show you guys what it looks like. Let's head out to the greenhouse and get it. Okay, here it is. Look at this bloom. It is so pretty. This is called a very awesome hibiscus. And I think the most fun part about these plants is that they have such huge tropical looking flowers um, that it looks like they shouldn't be able to grow in an area like mine, like a zone five, but they're actually really hardy. They are uh, hardy down to a zone four. They're a zone four through nine, I believe, which means that they can take wintertime temperatures down to negative 30 degrees, which is amazing. Um, so I wanna grab this plant and take it over to the spot where we're gonna put it in the ground. All right, so I think that this spot is gonna be absolutely perfect because it gets a lot of sun throughout the day. And this type of hibiscus uh, likes part to full sun, which means it needs at least six to eight hours of sun every day in order to look the healthiest and give you the most amount of blooms. And I've been working on this spot. So this is behind our gazebo, right next to a pergola. I planted some boxwoods right behind me and I'm gonna keep them in really nice tight spheres as they grow. Uh, and then right in front of me to my right, there's a gorgeous drift of penicetum. And I don't even know what variety it is. It was here when we moved in and I love this grass. And then I planted a sunflower right here in front of me. Um, I just think it's gonna be kind of pretty to have a really tight formal kind of shapes right here and then have them back planted with something more free, more full of color. So I think that this is gonna be perfect. And it grows about four feet tall and about five feet wide. So it kind of grows a little bit wider than it does tall. So I think it's gonna fill in this area just absolutely perfectly. I think that this color flower is gonna be really pretty back here too, especially if I continue planting sunflowers in front of it. I think they're really pretty together. The colors, they look very bright and cheerful back here. So this is kind of like a lavender pink color with a dark red eye, which I think makes the center of the flower stand out really pretty. And they grow like eight inches wide or up to eight inches wide. Um, so they're a really bold, striking kind of flower to put out in your garden. And the really cool thing about this variety of hibiscus, it's been bred to be more dense and more full. So like you may have an older type hibiscus or may have experience with an older type and they're kind of spindly and um, they're just not a super attractive looking plant. But these, once they're established, they get really full, really dense clump. Um, you might be familiar with the Rosa Sharon type hibiscus. They are actually in the same family. They're both a type of hibiscus, but this is technically a perennial. So it dies all the way back down to the ground every single year and pushes fresh new branches. Um, it's good to leave the branches through the winter just so that it protects the crown of the plant. And then like late winter, early spring, when you go out the, there to do some cleanup out in your garden, you can cut back the stems from last year and then just wait. And this is one of the ones we get tons of questions about down at the garden center. We get lots of calls. I think my Rosa Sharon or I think my hibiscus is dead. They're actually one of the last ones in the spring to break dormancy. So we always tell people, give it another month, give it another two months. It'll push and it'll it will grow. So you can see all of the buds on top of each one of these branches. I mean, it's just completely loaded. So we have a lot more color coming our way. They typically bloom midsummer through early fall. And that's why I wanted to wait until now to show you this plant. I wanted there to be a bloom on it so you could see how pretty it is. I mean, I could show you a picture of it, um, but it's not quite like seeing it in the garden. It's best to plant these in spring if you can. Um, I'm kind of taking a risk planting it right in the middle of summer and it's a little bit more work and you still can do that. Um, but you just have to know that you have to be on it a little bit more with moisture, make sure you keep it really well watered. All right, so now I wanna get it in the ground so we can see what it looks like. I am gonna be using some Biotone Starter Fertilizer in the hole, which is a great one to use in the beginning because it promotes really um, good root growth, which is what we want. We don't wanna promote a whole bunch of growth up top right away. And then I'll be following it up next spring with Hollytone because it actually likes a pH, a soil pH a little bit more acidic. We're really high alkaline here. So I'm gonna add more of an acid-based fertilizer for this plant. I think it'll keep it happier. and I really like how it looks here. In fact, I'm considering putting in two more, maybe one on either side to create a nice little hedge, like a screen of these hibiscus. So there's a really good chance that when we do an update on this plant, you'll see three of them in a row instead of just this one. Um, there are a couple other things I wanted to mention. It does attract hummingbirds, which kind of is obvious. I mean, the color is such an attractant. Uh, and then it's also resistant to deer. So if you deal with deer in your area, this is a really good perennial to plant. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm excited to give you updates on how it looks in the future and we will see you in the next one. Bye.